Trade What You See with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, folks, uh, I'm going to change course a little bit here today. Uh, we were talking about being on the floor of the exchange on the last part of the segment of my previous show, and I wanted to continue with that. The reason why I went to uh, Chicago to, uh, to become a floor trader, it was my uh, 40th birthday, right around my 40th birthday, a little bit over, <clears throat> but anyway... Uh, a year over but anyway what happened was i knew that these computers were coming because i saw samples from uh, computrack and other places that uh, th this digital stuff was going to be coming you'd be able to trade up from your home which something that i always wanted to do and uh, so i knew that was going to be happening at least in trading from an office where you didn't have to you know get i didn't have charts at drexel you know all i had was dailies we didn't have any interday charts the only way you get an interday chart was go to adp up at conti commodity and it was like twenty dollars to get an interday chart on pork bellies well i didn't need that 20 men worked with me and he had a panasonic a computer long before any of these others came out and we could do some of that stuff but it was not easy to do and it was hard work to get it done so i knew that once that was done that if i could see you know what the prices were and i could get filled within a reasonable price of where i thought it was that i could beat the market consistently i knew i could do that because i had done that from 76 through 82 i never had a year less than 100 percent a year I never did that ever since. But during those years, of course, I was long gold and silver most of that time. You know, you, it's hard to lose money from 76, you know, to 80 in the market uh, in gold because it was straight up and I was buying gold and silver plus other things. That, you know, inflation. I got lucky, you know. It still did okay. But when I got to Chicago, and believe me, I did a lot of business at Lynn Waldock. Uh, they were the, the big meat brokers there, so I did a lot of bellies, hogs, and cattle. And then in the foreign currencies, I was dealing with uh, Rosenthal Collins. And then over at the Board of Trade, I was dealing with, uh, oh, dear, I can't even think of the name of it. Oh, shucks, a huge firm. Oh, shucks, I'll think of it in a second. Most of my business was done at the Merck anyway. I did grain. I did wheat, corn, and beans over there, but that was pretty much it. So I, I knew that the order, I thought it was going to be really fair, but when I got there, you know, I, I knew some people, you know, but I didn't know many people. The first person that I met that was outside of the group that I knew was Byron Tucker. And I met him by accident because he had his Brooks Brothers uh, suit on with the vest and everything and his little fedora hat. And he had galoshes on, you know, for, for rubber boots for the for the wintertime. And I started laughing and uh, uh, he saw me laughing and he sent his girl over uh, to uh you know, say he, he wants to talk to you. And I knew he was a big shot because he ran Goldman Sachs's desk. And so why are you laughing at me? And I said, I'm not laughing at you. I said, I'm laughing at your at your galoshes. And he says, no one calls these galoshes. And I, well, anyway, from that time, he's been my closest friend for these past uh, 38 years. Anyway, uh, the reason I'm getting it all meandering around here, it was in about seven months into the trading of an, in 1982. It was in August or something like that. Oh no, you know what? It was a July. It was a July cattle report came out, and I was short three pork bellies, and I had shorted them pretty good. I had about a point and a half profit in them, and uh, and so the the cattle report came out, and it was the most bullish cattle report they had ever seen. And they were calling everything limit up. Bellies, hogs, cattle, everything was going to be limited up. And so uh, the girl that had done all my tr uh, run, ran the trading desk for Drexel there uh, at Lynn Waldock, <clears throat> she was kind enough to, uh, I said, can see if you can put this into the order desk of the, of the lead broker, Maury Oster, uh, at, the, um, at the Merck. I said, see if you can get on top of the deck. She says, well, I asked him. So he goes over, she comes back, he wants to see you. And as soon as I saw her walking over, I knew that I'd made a really bad mistake. So I walked over to him, and he was a short fellow. He's about five foot six. So he's standing on the first step, so we're about eyeball to eyeball. He said, I understand you got a problem. I said, yes, sir. I said, I'm sorry. I said, I'll go back, and I'll, I'll do it the legitimate way or do it the right way. He said, I understand that you have a problem. And I said, yeah, I do. He said, what's the problem? I said, I'm short bellies. He says, what's wrong with that? 
And he said, well, there's going to be a cattle report, and they're going to call everything up the limit. So bellies are going to be up the limit? And I said, well, that's what they're saying over there. He said, who said that? And I said, one of those guys over there. And he said, well, and he opened up his deck. And it's the only time in the three years I was there that I saw the deck. And on top of that deck, it said, sell 300 February bellies at the market. That was 300 bellies. That's a lot of bellies. And so I knew the bellies were not going to open limit up with that. If they did, they might open higher, but they're not going to open limit up. And when cattle opened, which was 10 minutes before the bellies opened, cattle opened slightly higher, not limit up, but slightly higher. Bellies didn't trade for two days. They were limit down two days in a row. That was the last time that I saw a deck, okay? And not only that, I got fined $100, which I thought I should have got fined a lot more. And that $100 fine was basically, you know, a slap in the wrist and uh, that I was a happy camper just to go through that. So after that, I never saw a deck, never wanted to see a deck. All I could see those guys working their butts off down there to make things very fair, and they were very fair. This is when people were paying a minimum commission was $40. If you were trading at Merrill Lynch or Dean Witter or EF Hutton, someplace like that, you were probably playing $80 to $100. Now you're paying $3 both sides. I mean, you're paying nothing. You're, get, you're just like a floor trader. This is why the volume has gone crazy and seats have gone from – 103,000 that I paid for mine to 4 million. You know, so that that's why this business has exploded because the volatility's there, the volume's there, the fairness is there. It's a great business to be in. And uh, that's why I'm still doing it all these years and still doing it. I have bad days. Yeah, of course I have bad days. I have a few good days in between too. But the uh, main thing is, is it's been fun for me and I really, really enjoyed it. So that's, I've got other stories, but that's, uh, there, you know, Byron always reminds me, tell them the story about this and tell me the story about that. And I say, well, they might, may or may not be interested, but uh, who knows? They're, some of them are quite funny. I've written notes through all the years. I ought to get into those because I was going to do an autobiography 30 years, well, 20 years ago when I think it was thinking of retiring at uh, 62. And um, I, I, that lasted about three months. My daughter said, I told her I was going to retire. And she looked at me and she said, and do what? <laughs> and sure enough, that's uh, still what I'm doing to this day. All right, let's get on to the markets, folks. Uh, we got the uh, – I'm going to put a chart of the, the uh, bond market up here. Uh, let's try it again, Larry. The, the regional banks, KRE. Remember right there or right around February 6th, Jim Bardleone was on about six weeks ago. Well, it's been two months now. And he said, looks like we're getting ready for a break. And look what's happened. We went from 66 to 41, and we're still dropping. And uh, until this thing bottoms, I don't think you're going to see a real significant rally in the stock market. We're getting close, as you can see from the bottom of the chart down there, that's very, very close to a three drive to a bottom. That's going to be somewhere probably between 38 and a share and $35 a share. Probably going to be one or two more banks that are going to be out there. They're going to shake the tree a little bit. But uh, we're going to have a bottom sometime in here. And if you remember, we had Stan Harley on yesterday, and uh, he thinks there'll be a bottom sometime in June. So we've got to take a break here. Remember, Mike Moore is going to have session two coming up here in just a little bit, and I'll come up and one other thing I need to focus on when we get back. Okay, we'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. C C call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, uh, one of the things that I uh, try to do every day is when I send out the videos is select certain trades. Now, this trade that you have setting up here right now is a chart of the uh, half hour chart of uh, November soybeans. That's new crop soybeans. And you'll notice that they went right within one penny of the 382 retracement this morning and then rallied uh, about 18 cents. And my reasoning behind not taking this trade was the fact that this is only the first down day out of the last nine. Now, it's very unusual to have a market go up nine days and then only correct one day. And that's why I want to do it. There was a second reasoning behind it. We had four positions on. We were short the British pound with a nice profit. We were short the stock market, the E-mini, with a big profit. We were long gold, which is still, still doing good. And we had natural gas, it was all doing good. So I had four positions on, and I didn't want to add five positions. I'm not a money manager. I'm just trying to give these guys trades to see that they can do it themselves if they practice and read the book. And that's, uh, you know, the book is the, the, the Floor Trader's Handbook, of course, and then the uh, Trade What You See book. But that Floor Trader's Handbook's got everything in it that you need to be a successful trader. It's done on 30,000 trades in a euro over a long period of time, all done by computer generated that shows you that the odds are in your favor, 60%. You're going to win 1.8 times more money than you lose, and you can't get better odds than that, folks. Now, if you just traded the euro, that would be great. These currencies are wonderful to trade, and trading at the mercantile exchange is better than trading at foreign exchange place. The reason why is if you trade at the Merc, you're dealing with a contract Okay, and you can get usually three dollars in and out, or four dollars. Let's say four dollars in and out. But if you're trading at a, a, a forex firm, what they're going to do is they are going to charge you usually one pip, sometimes two. So that's usually ten or twenty dollars. So by golly, you don't be able to see it. Uh, what's going? Uh, what's wrong? I was just informed that the E-mini S&P bounced right off the 3 ATU and the rally back to that uh, 41 uh, 20, I believe, this morning and then went back to make new lows. Again, that 3 ATU is a 
very, very valuable thing to put in your trading uh, armamentarium because, uh, boy, that gives you a really good indication of where the trend is. And the folks that you have to start watching now is to start watching gold, folks, because gold's had a big run. Let me just show you what happened. Now, I know platinum has nothing to do with the gold, but, well, it is a precious metals, but those boys that trade platinum also trade gold. So you want to pay uh, close attention to that. But you can see what's happened to platinum here. Let me get the chart up. That was my first indication yesterday was to possibly look for an indication of where we might run into some re resistance in gold. We saw it with Mike Moore saying, hey, this is a this is a heads up. Pay attention to what's going on. And that's all I'm doing. Same thing in the bonds today. I see the same thing in the bonds that I'm seeing in the gold market. And as we watch these things unfold here, just get this gold chart up. You'll see that this has been a rocket ship to the upside, which we were. Uh, fortunate enough to catch a little bit of the fuel on that rocket ship to the tune of a nice run. But you can see they had that big up here. We have a straight up move. The retracement that we had today was exactly 382, you know, down only what $17 from the high. But that's the first indication now that you got to pay attention to what's going on. Now, if you're a moving average trader and you trade uh, off fundamentals, so you don't need that. But if you're looking to keep your risk small, and not, you know, not risk an arm and a leg on some of these things, and you've got to be able to, you know, and this is what these machines are for. They give you a, a heartbeat of what's going on in the market, folks. That's what, that's what these charts are for. It's showing you why they go up and down. They all do it the same way, A, B equals C, D. I don't care what the Elliott waves call those things, but they're A, B, C, D patterns. You can call them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16 different swings, but it's still A, B equals C, D. That's where it all comes to. And you get that right, you got it right. I'm sure you've told your, your kids a story about the, the little boy who wants to, to get the world right. He's worried about all kinds of politics, and he's doing a picture of a man. And his mother says, why are you doing a, a puzzle with a picture of the man? He says, Mom, he says, I think if I can get the man right, I, he said, I think I can get the world right. And he's absolutely right. Uh, oh, I have to share with you something that is really, really, really neat because I, I, I met Michael Jackson once back in uh, 19 in, in Westlake Village in 1980. And his family had just moved there and he was out there feeding the ducks and we were coming back from church, St. Jude's there. And uh, when uh, he was out there and we saw the bodyguards and we didn't know who it was, but when we got out, we saw it was Michael Jackson, and he went to the same uh, high school in Gary, Indiana, in, in Emerson High School that uh, the ex-wife went to. And so she yelled out, uh, Emerson, Red Raiders, and he raised his hand, and he said, go, go. And so the bodyguards realized that it was no danger, and so we got to chat with him for a little bit. And we got home and told, told the daughters uh, who were 11 and 12 at the time that uh, – that we had just met Michael Jackson, they went wacko. They knew he lived in the area, but it was in a compound that was not easy to get to. So let's get up here and take a look at this next chart that I want to show you. Give me one second here. And that is the Bitcoin. I want to get it up here to show you had a question on this Bitcoin. This Bitcoin is acting very negative, folks. Let me tell you why. The 382 on this range here, going back a year, Remember, we had 67,000. That's when it made the three drive to a top pattern. We've hit that 382 level at 28,400, 28,900. I think it hit 29,000. If it ever closes any day above 29,000, then be careful being short cryptocurrencies or blockchains or any of that stuff because they could really go. And blockchains are based on a lack of trust. And boy, if we've ever seen a lack of trust in any country in the world, uh, with the exception of Zimbabwe, and nobody travels there because it's too dangerous, uh, this is the time to be skeptical. The news is out. The news is good. The news is bad. You don't even know what the news is three quarters of the time. That's why I don't watch it. When I watch TV, it's on mute. I read what's going on. Uh, the headlines of uh, what's there, and that's what I try to look at. I don't listen to any of that stuff. It gets me in trouble. And I've heard it before, especially with this thing with the Saudis uh, dropping this and dropping that. I've been through all that stuff before. Now, sometimes you're going to get trapped in one of those, and, you know, that's going to be bad, but, you know, you're going to work out of it. You know, you always can. I always have. It. This, this, these are not hard things to do. When you're wrong, you get out. You know, that's the best you can do. And sometimes there's going to be bad ones. 
that's knock on wood because it hasn't happened yet, but it might happen today or tomorrow. But when it does, I'm going to be prepared for it. So that's what it is. Remember, folks, luck is where preparation meets opportunity, folks. And the key there is to make sure that preparation that you're using is not the other kind that is between the letter K and J, whatever that letter is. Oh, it's an H. Let's move on, and we're going to have Mike Moore on of Mork Analytics in just a second here out of Knoxville, Tennessee. And I really enjoy listening to him talk about the um, crack spreads and stuff that he's going to be talking about because spreads give you leverage like you can't get anywhere else in the world. We'll be right back, folks, with Mike Moore, Mike Analytics. More Analytics. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back. Mike, how you doing? Good to have you back, my friend. Good. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me on. This is a lovely office that you have here. Thank you. That's really beautiful. That's very <laughs> nice. It. You can't get those in these double wide traders here trailers here in Tucson, Arizona. So someday I'll come down and visit. That's really nice. Tell the yeah. folks what you're going to be talking to us about this second half hour. I'd like to talk about those spreads that you do because I had done some spreads many years ago that were really, really profitable. I haven't done them since because I'm just a you know flat out foreign currency and index trader. But tell us what you're looking at when you see these spreads because the leverage that you have is like many times what it is off of the regular uh, forex uh, um, commodities and stuff, isn't it? Yeah, so this is actually a very uh, unique moment to look at these spreads. If uh, you recall on some of the past shows uh, when you've interviewed me before, 
Um, many people are looking for a leading indicator, right? They look at stochastics and they look at RSIs and MACDs and all these other things. But in the energies, you truly do have a leading indicator. The unleaded gasoline and the heating oil lead the price direction of crude oil 85 to 90 percent of the time. And the reason for that is those are the products of crude oil. So the demand for those products are what drives the uh, demand for crude oil. That's why they normally lead. However, right now in these past two weeks, we are seeing that 15 percent where the crude is leading and not the unleaded gas or heat. And this makes sense because the, the crude move up over the past two weeks has really been more because of an OPEC cut of oil production than it has been an increase in the gasoline, an increase in demand for the gasoline or the heating oil. So if you see, um, let me just share my screen here for a minute. Hey, Mike, what kind of microphone are you using? Um, I don't know. It's called Blue. This big round blue ball. <laughs> oh, okay. Does it, does it sound okay? Well, that's great. You know, okay. I'm going to take a look at getting one because uh, can you get them for under ten bucks? No, I think this. Yeah, I better wait. I better wait. Better hold off on that. Then it's called B L U E. Yeah, blue. It's called blue. Okay, I'll check it out. Thank yeah. you very much. I didn't mean to interrupt, but uh, right. sound quality is so great, and the fact that you don't have to wear earphones is a big plus. So I'm going to take a look at that. So in the crude oil, right, I'd said that on March 27th, we left the bullish reversal. And we've seen $11.17 from 70.64. However, if you notice, this is the uh, unleaded gas crack here. And I got bearish when we broke down below this line up in here on the 29th, two days later. And you can see the extent of that move right there is $5,400 per lot in just about three days. Mm -hmm. At the same time, do you want me to describe what the RBOB crack is? Just so yes, I have, I have a, I have a, you know, I'm a, I've been doing this for a very long time. The question yeah. that I have is when I used to put spreads in, you know, we used to write the tickets, you know, spread by June, you know, sell these at whatever the, whatever the, the bid offer was, you know, say do it at, uh, let's say 10 cents. But when you put them in electronically now, do you put them in one at a time, or can you put the spread in as a spread? Does a spread trade like a like a regular uh, regular future or crude oil? Does it do that? Yes and no. So, to any of you trading out there, if you're new to these spreads, it's very important that you ask a very specific question of the software provider that you are uh -huh. trading through. Okay. Okay. So Good. what you need to ask is if you trade the energy spreads like the RBOB crack or the heating oil crack, are you trading the exchange traded spread or are you trading a synthetic spread? What's the difference? The difference is if you're trading an exchange traded spread, you are actually trading this spread on the New York Mercantile Exchange exchange but there's okay. many softwares out there that aren't actually giving you direct access to the exchange but they are mimicking what the exchange is doing with bids and offers on the rbob and, and the crude and they're executing an rbob crack for you but doing it in two separate uh, products and the problem with that is is oftentimes there is a lot of price disparity, yes. not to mention um, other people can take advantage of you there because they can be uh, getting inside that bid and offer. Okay. And just, just as a refresher for some of you out there, what is an RBOB crack? What is a heating oil crack? When crude oil comes into a refinery, it goes into a machine literally called a cracker. And that cracker cracks out of the crude oil, either unleaded gasoline or heating oil, amongst a few other smaller uh, distillates. But the main things are unleaded and heating oil. And it's either taking one of those out at a time, given what, whatever the demand is, right? So we're going into summer. The demand's higher for unleaded gasoline. So the RBOB cracks would be going more in, in the wintertime. The heating oil crack which would, uh, would fire up. But what you're doing for the crack 
uh, whatever you're doing for the crack, if you're buying the crack, you're buying the product and selling the crude. Or if you're selling the crack, you're selling the product and buying the crude, and you're making money off of the price differential between the crude and that and that product. So, going back here to the Arbob crack, you can see that over these past few days, um, if you were long the crude oil instead of the Arbob, you would have made at maximum fifty fifty four fifty four hundred dollars more per lot in just three days. And if you look at the heating oil. Um, sorry, that's not the heating oil. Bear with me. The heating oil crack. Sorry. The heating oil crack. I've been bearish since up in here, since we broke down below this line, and that you would have uh, made eighty six hundred dollars more if you were loaned the crude oil over the past number of days. Mm -hmm. Now just remember that the crude oil showing this to you on this chart. The crude oil has been rallying out of here for the past number of days. And the reasoning behind this is, again, I'm sure there's plenty of people that knew seven, eight days ago that this OPEC cut was coming, but a lot of retail traders are not going to know that. People that are in the know, that are over there, um, I'm sure we're taking positions on this a lot earlier than your average guy can. That's why I like technical analysis, because it will, it will give you the signal to get in on a move um, ninety percent of the time, sooner than the fundamentals will paint that picture for you. Even though the fundamentals are what actually drives the market, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the examples of uh, when that switched. However, the heating oil just broke above this formation today, and now that changes the pictures again. The picture again to the heating oil being strong relative to the crude mm -hmm. and the. And you can see right here where I wrote about it in the analysis. I said trade below 38.59 projects this downward 110 ticks minimum, 365 ticks plus maximum. We attained 879 of that on the on the downside. Then this morning I said decent trade above 32.62. Um, I said this uh, set this out uh, yesterday afternoon because I sent them out in the afternoon. We'll warrant decent short covering likely for days, right? So if your average uh, if your average range in there is hey, let's okay. take a take a we're gonna take a few minutes to come right back and then i have a couple questions that i need to ask you about the, the auto trading thing okay Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up.
Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Mike Moore of Moore Analytics. And Mike, I, you know, I've been doing this business for a long time, and you're doing stuff that is really sophisticated. And I know you're an expert at it and everything, but you, you are working with a group out of Chicago that uh, works with um, uh, autom automatic trading, where people can, you can actually do the trading for these folks. Can you, how does that work? I, I'm not even sure how it works. Um, that's called letter of direction trading. And by the way, I said on the last show that you had to use more dash analytics, but I got it repointed so you can use more dash analytics or more analytics. Uh, okay. They'll both point back to the same thing. Uh, letter of direction trading is basically if you have an account set up, you can set up a letter of direction where you allow the brokerage house to execute in your account uh, on a per lot basis, and you pay for that a fee per month. So let's just say you want to trade uh, the spread program. And you want them to trade one lot, you know, at a clip. Mm -hmm. So let's say you pay $150, $200 a month or whatever. They'll execute in your account whatever the trader is doing in his account. So it'll just mimic that in, in each account. Okay. Okay. So it's a way to participate in what the, the trader's doing without you actually having to do execute the trades yourself if you don't have the time or you're not normally in front of a computer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can can the customer put limits on it? Like, say, if it drops twenty five percent, stop trading or anything like that. Is is there a way to do that? Or yes, are there yes. Okay, good. That would All be right. more of a question for the brokerage house than on, than on my side. But okay, and then you, you know you should have some idea what those drawdowns are and whatnot. And there's different appropriate amounts for whatever size the account is. Sure. Okay, now I have one other question. Now, uh, is there a minimum that a person has to have to uh, you know participate in something like this? Uh, depends on what I mean. I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm answering a question for a letter of direction programs in general, not necessarily. Yeah, mine, I, I understand that. Just yeah. a rough idea because I'm not familiar yeah. with them at all. So I'm learning as you go. So please tell me what you're what yeah, you're I seeing mean, here. I mean, in general, you're going to have you know you're going to have to have an account with you know at least you know ten, fifteen, twenty five thousand dollars in it because mm -hmm. you're going to have to cover the margin, and margin is what it costs to even trade a single lot mm -hmm. of a of yeah. lot. And then you're going to have to have money on top of that to risk. So, um, yeah, I, I would say at least 15, 25 grand or something like that. But, you know, okay, people, that's fair enough. Open, okay. people open up accounts with 100 grand, 500 grand, a million, you know, whatever it is. Okay. Do you want me to get back to these spreads? Or do you yes, yes please go. Yeah, please do. Yeah. And if if person has an interest, they can contact you at uh, More Analytics, correct? Exactly. And that's M M O H R. Uh, no, M O O R. <laughs> let me let me pull it back up. Here you go. Can you see it right there? Yeah, I can see it now. I, so I happen like to know some. I happen to know someone with that spelling M O H R, and I don't know why I can't. I know it is M O R. So go awesome. ahead. <laughs> uh, but yeah, feel free to reach out to me. Um, so just back to the point. Um, let me let me just pull this back up because I want to show you a clear illustration of what I was talking about in case it was unclear. In the crude oil, you can see right down in here on 327, they said that we were bullish, left a minor bullish reversal below. And it has rallied the past eight days higher. But two days after that, on the 29th, 
you can see in here, or no, on the 27th, actually, the same day, I said to get bearish the, the heat crack. So what that said to you is if you're going to be long, you want to be long the crude oil instead of the heating oil. Because if the heat crack is bearish, that means the heat is weak relative to the crude or the crude <laughs> strong relative to the heat. And so that price differential over the ensuing days was a price differential of $8,760. That's a lot of extra equity to make in just, a sh in just, uh, in just four days. Okay, And the same thing goes with the unleaded gas. Unleaded, I actually got kind of bearish when it broke below these highs, but more definitively right here on the 29th, which was two days later. But that there also came off $5,400 per lot. Now, both of those pictures have changed. This morning we got bullish when we broke above this formation, and that's rallied 29.80 in just one day. And the heating oil crack just broke above this formation as rallied 16.90, but I expect this to rally for days. And when I say rally for days, what does that mean to you financially? Well, if you look at a uh, look at what the typical range is in the heating oil crack, it's 195 ticks. So if it's going to rally for days with an S at the end of it, you know you might be expecting four, six, eight, ten grand more per wow. lot. Wow. Um, and with your risk being relatively equal, right? You have a choice. You want to get along the crude, the R bob, or the heat. They're all basically going up. But these spreads tell you which mm -hmm. one is more likely to pay you a lot more than the other two. And these past two weeks just happen to be that 15% of the time where the crude oil dictated that you should be long the crude as it's rallying instead of the R bar of the heat dictating mm -hmm. that you should be on either one of those. Um, did you want to look at the further energies? Do you want to look at the S&Ps or no, the gold? No, uh, we've only got a couple more, well, f three or four more minutes. So let's take a look at the uh, – the uh, S and P and the, and the stock market in general that you'd like to, because I know you do a lot of work with that and your technical work is great. So, please tell the folks what you're looking at here. Thank you. So the stock market, um, back up here, pull this up for you. Sorry, where is my? I just got to pull it up. There we go. Um, We held exhaustion, ma macro exhaustion in here, rallied up into a bullish correction. And then on a, a lower time frame basis, we've also been bullish. Um, we held exhaustion with the 39.39 and a quarter low, and we've rallied 232.5 points on that. And then more recently, we broke above 40.34.75, 40, which projects this upward 109 minimum, 233 plus maximum. We've attained 137 of that so far. So just looking at this on a lower time frame basis, you can see here um, we had broken above this formation here the other day. That's what's given us this projection to the upside. Uh, we got up in here. We held uh, some key some key resistance, and we rolled over a little bit. So what does this really mean? This could be in the midst of a new bullish um, structure. But if we remain below here and roll over, this could start a whole new bearish structure if we break down below these lines. But currently, even though it's lower, I am bullish. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, that's great. And that lower line comes down around 40, 42 area. It's increased a little bit today. Um, there's also a line up above at 41, 78, 73, which has increased a little bit. If we got above that, uh, we're likely to rally up as well. So... Yeah, currently bullish, but the market's really trying to paint a much bigger picture within the next week or so here. Okay, we got a question for one of our listeners. What's your uh, outlook, say, for the next 10 days in the, uh, the crude oil complex? Anything that jumps out at you? Uh, I'm bullish in the crude oil complex. Like I said, we broke above um, this formation. We pulled right back to it. I've been bullish since down a year, but this has projections of $15 to the upside. So large projections, unless we see a decent break below 78.80 mm -hmm. to 78, you know, this is going to decrease a little bit. Let's just say 78.80 to 78.60, a decent mm -hmm. break below there, then that should bring in pressure for days. Well, listen, Mike, thanks for joining us, buddy. We'll have you on again very soon, okay? Probably Sounds right good. after Easter and enjoy the holidays with your family. And we'll see you uh, in a few, we'll say next week sometime, maybe next Friday. How about next Friday? You going to be busy? Uh, that sounds good. Thank All right, you very we'll much. All right, we'll put you on. 
one thirty next Friday. Thank, Thank you, you, Larry. It's been an honor. You bet. Appreciate it. Yep. Bye. We'll be right back, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and I wanted to uh, give you a little update here on what the markets are doing. Uh, if you were on earlier and uh, we talked about the Treasury bonds, we were selling them at 134.05. They're now trading at 134.02. You made a grand total of 93 American dollars. So I would take that and take your family out for a nice dinner tonight and also put in $10 into the collection box on Easter Sunday. But I do believe we're coming into a pretty good correction coming in into the Treasury bonds to the tune of maybe – Oh, somewhere between three to five points, possibly even more, because we've had this big move from 126 up to the high today, 134. So it's going to be interesting to see if that's going to be uh, what it's going to be. And it could be even greater. I don't know. Maybe even be less. Maybe they'll go to 139 without even backing off from here, which is certainly possible. The key thing to remember, folks, from our perspective here at Trade What You See is the number that we hit. Tuesday night, last night, or night before last on Tuesday, you'll notice here that we were, oh, dear, I hope that it's coming up now, but I posted a chart in there of the, uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, but I hope that it's coming up. Let me check and see. 
Uh, here it is. Just a second here. That will get it up here. Uh, that That's not showing again. It's showing someplace else, but not mine. Anyway, uh, that 61% retracement came in at 33,845. The high was 33,875. So it was only 40 points off on something 33,000. That is pretty much spot on. So if we get above that, boy, it's going to be really, really bullish. But until that happens, the market is still in a negative downward move. We're trading, you know, about 50 handles under where we were looking at it to go short up there at that 41.58 uh, level. And so far, it's working. But, you know, like we say, you keep your stop at break even. Have a wonderful Easter, folks. Do some nice things for your relatives and friends and strangers, whatever you can do. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude. And may God bless.